good morning to you guys who are watching online. We're really excited to be with you this morning. We are in part three today uh, of this life-changing series, Break the Cycle. And these messages are, are really bringing encouragement to so many people. I hope you've been encouraged. But today we're going to dig deep into really how to break the cycle. We're believing for cycles to be broken in people's lives. So I want to start off with just this question. Why do we remain in these unhealthy cycles when we know especially that they are unhealthy? Why do we remain in these cycles? You know, the Bible says that we reap what we sow. You guys ever heard that, that scripture? We reap what we sow. So whatever we plant in our garden of life, whatever seeds we plant, we're going to reap the reward or the, the curse, if you will, of whatever we've sown into our life. So why do we continually over and over and over participate in those things or plant those seeds in our lives when we know they're going to bring a really, really harmful Return. I'm going to give you some examples here. You know, why, why, do we, why do we talk about others behind their back when we know eventually it's going to come back to us? And we're not bringing honor to them at all, right? Why, why do we, uh, you know, why do so many people in America utilize tobacco products when, when we know it's proven that it produces cancer? I mean, I mean, I'm getting real with you, right? Right? You want a real pastor, right? Why do we eat unhealthy foods when we know that we're going to maybe gain weight or look or, or not feel so good? Man, I know that when I when I am at the baseball game. Only at the baseball game? Okay, anywhere there are hot dogs <laughs> for sale, I, I, I fold. I'm, I'm done. Especially if there is sauerkraut involved, I fold. Some of you guys are saying, listen, you either love sauerkraut or you hate it, all right? I love sauerkraut. My mom spoiled me from a young age. Anywhere there's hot dogs and sauerkraut and spicy mustard, it's over! It's over for me. I'm done. Anytime we go, this is a cycle of mine. Maybe this message is for me. If it's not for anybody else, this message is for me. Because Misty wants to break me of this cycle. Because last time we were at the Naturals baseball game, and I spent like $6.75 on a hot dog. Per child and yourself. <laughs> they were hungry. The little birds were hungry. They wanted food. I was just providing for my family. So, so I, I folded even though, and you know what? In the end, you know what? You know what I reaped out of that is I did not feel so good when I was done eating that hot dog. I never feel great after folding, but I do it. And so, you know, that's, that's just kind of a funny, lighthearted example, but, but really it can be very serious for some. Some people just overeat to an extent where they gorge themselves and, and, and even even are, are, are just eating till they're so full they just make themselves sick, you know, over and over and over and it becomes a cycle in their lives. A lot of people, some people eat when they're stressed and they lean on the food instead of leaning on God. Why do we get involved in these cycles when we know that they're so harmful for us? How about spouses? Now I know nobody, I know there's no married couples in here that actually push the other's button on purpose. I know that right? I know that no that married couples, happen. that would never happen because you guys are awesome. We would never push each other's buttons, right? Because, because you know your spouse better than anybody on the planet and you know what can send him or her to the moon okay. and back within I'm gonna seconds. I'm going to have to bounce in here for just a minute. Bounce in, baby. All right. Years ago, that is, we'll get to that later, but that's nearly what caused divorce in our marriage what? early on. Yeah. Like, you don't know. You were there. But like, just a few days ago, I was one, pushing of, those buttons. I was like, one, <laughs> one of the buttons that um, Brad used to push, because I had a problem with always having to have the last word. And so I've tried to grow and mature out of that. But just as a joke the other day, we were having a conversation, and <laughs> I was a little bit stressed that we had a lot to do. Is that unusual? And we needed to get it done fast. And I was like, okay, I'm leaving, and I'll be back in a little bit. And b as I'm walking out the door... The last thing he said is, okay, make sure you hurry. Okay, so for most of you guys, you're like, so what? He said, so hurry. And then, well, no, I knew. said it through the crack of the door and shut the door. And then he shut it, and I <laughs> stood out on the sidewalk with my back to the house and thought, he did that on purpose. He was trying to push my buttons. He, okay, all right. I was trying to be funny, guys. And I thought it's for a, a second, joke. I could just leave because I'm really not mad. I mean, because we've kind of moved past that. But I thought... He did it. I better go back in and at least act like I'm upset. So I walked no, back in. No, no, no. What you mean to say that is, is I better just go back in and have the last word. So I walked back in. I'm like, hey, honey. what did you say? And he said, ha, ha. He starts laughing. And I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. I'm going to hurry. I'll see you when I get back. 
I shut the door and I run. But in a funny way, <laughs> you know, we honestly, in the heat of moments, you know how to send somebody to the moon and back and make their head spin and you think they're demonically possessed all because you push a couple buttons, especially with your spouse. Don't do it. Don't push me. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. So why do we, why do we cheat or lie or say untruths when we know that God eventually will bring those truth, those untruths to light? Why do we reject doing the most important things? Why do we reject the most important cycles when we know that we're going to reap the rewards and the blessings and the favor of God in our lives that comes from doing what's right? Why? It's like the things that we know we're not supposed to do, we do those things, and the things we're supposed to do, we don't do them at all. And it's this constant battle inside of ourselves. Why do we do the things we do? I submit to you today that it's because we are, are you ready? We're lazy, right? We're fearful. We're prideful. We're comfortable. And we're insecure. And there's probably more, but those are the ones I could think of, right? And how true is that? We get stuck in these cycles, in these vicious cycles that reap destruction in our lives. We convince ourselves that we can't change. How many times have you noticed in your life that you've convinced yourself that you are unable to change? My brother, who I loved very dearly, was addicted to alcohol for a long time in his life. And every time one of us, uh, you know, from the family would address, you know, this part of his life, he would say, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. You'll, you, there's no way you could understand. He had himself convinced that there was nothing he could do. A lot of times when we get really caught up in a negative cycle, and I don't mean just a sin cycle, I just mean cycles of destruction, you know, any kind of negative cycle in our lives, we, we tend to, if we have fallen and failed enough, then we convince ourselves and label ourselves as a failure and we convince ourselves that we are unable to break the cycle in our lives. We, we tell ourselves a lie. And the enemy uses that lie to just continually work in our mind against us over and over and over. And hey, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're, just, you're not going to be a success. You know, your, your marriage isn't going to work. You're, you're not going to get out of debt. You're, you're going to be in debt the rest of your life. You're, you're going to go bankrupt. You know, he starts, he starts feeding your mind with these lies and we get to a point if we're weak enough in the spirit that we begin to believe it right and Paul was well aware of this because we see here and I want you to to look at this passage with me in Romans chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 it says this the Apostle Paul says I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right. I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all of my heart. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person that I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Then he switches gears and says, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Paul was directly referring to the sin cycle in his life. He was addressing, we know in our, in our minds what is right, and yet we do what is wrong right? And we constantly struggle against this, this inner, the inner workings of this battle of the spirit. And we continually, continually over and over and over get involved in these cycles that we don't want to be involved in. But listen to what he said. He said, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, the crazy thing about cycles, and in the last couple of weeks we've talked about generational cycles, things that we pass down generationally to our kids. Cycles are nothing more than a lot of habits that we do over and over and over again. 
I want you to think about your life, and I wanted to bring in and make you actually write down everything that you do from the moment you wake up to the time you go to bed, but I figured it would take too long. So I want you to think in your own mind about your schedule. Now, any given day might be different. Maybe Monday through Friday is one pattern. Saturday and Sunday might be different patterns depending on what you do. But most of us do the same routine or the same habits day in and day out. The alarm goes off at a certain time. How many of you hit the snooze at least once when it goes? I mean, that is just, a, that's a routine, right? It's a habit or a cycle. I intentionally have three alarms set on my cell phone, and the first one I always hit snooze, always. But I have it in my mind that if I'm going to do that, then I should do it um, with purpose. You should do everything on purpose. So I set three. Then I never oversleep, right? The time I really need to get up is the final one. But we have these crazy cycles. Then you get up and you do what? Brad gets up or I get up and we go directly to the kitchen and we get two cups of water. We stand at the kitchen sink and we drink it. That's a whole nother message on health. But you should always start with that. We do that every single day. Then we go in and we work out. I mean, there is a routine that we have down pat. And that's because life is mostly habitual. Whatever you get set in your mind and you do it for just a few days in a row, all of a sudden you have created a habit or a cycle. You may have heard me say this before years ago when we talked about this subject one time before, but there are 11,000 signals that are going to your brain every day. 11,000, okay? That's telling your brain what needs to happen. Your brain only consciously recognizes 40 a day. Do you know why? There's so many that are not being recognized because those are habits that your brain already knows what's going to happen. You do not even need your brain's help on those. Have you ever been, especially as a bus driver, okay? Now, this is scary, right? Uh-oh. I know. Don't expose all the bus drivers. I'm not going to expose anything. I'm just saying, have you ever been driving along maybe to work and you find yourself in a trance and you come out of it and you're like, how did I get to work? here? How did I get to work? Raise your hand. I, I'm very curious. See? Isn't that crazy? Or worse yet, when I was a bus driver, now I'm not, so I can be honest. There's times I would snap out of that trance and be like, where the heck am I? Because I was a sub driver, right? But I drove these routes enough, I kind of just knew them by heart. But then I wake up and be like, what route is this? Where am I? Who's the next kid that gets on the bus? Oh, my gosh. Everybody sit down and be quiet. It's going to be okay. They're like, we didn't say anything. I'm like, I know, it's okay. Where am I? No, seriously, it would freak me out because I'm a deep thinker. Or do, do we have any other deep thinkers? I mean, you, you're driving and you're just like, you go into a zone and you're thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And then you snap out of it and you're like, I don't know where I am. It right? happens the because mind your mind doesn't takes need your over. Help. It's crazy. That's right. So most of life is these habits. And so the amazing thing is about the way God created our minds is that if we need to break a cycle, we need to start something new. It is possible. It's a possible if you start a new routine and you stick with it for a little while. But I want to show you guys this really cool illustration today to help you understand what we've been talking about with breaking cycles. You see, a lot of times what we do is we've tried, as Brad said, to break a cycle. Maybe let's just take something really simple, okay? Maybe you have tried to break the cycle of eating cheesecake at midnight. Okay. That was me. All right. I don't have any good ones. It all relates to food. Brought it to Realville. <laughs> all right. So for the longest time, <laughs> if we had cheesecake in our house, I didn't want my kids to notice I was eating dessert, right? So she would binge eat Kay? cheesecake in the middle of the night. The What's fridge. It? Binging anything. It was like a, a bite. And my kids <laughs> know that if I eat it off your plate and I don't get one myself, it doesn't count. Doesn't count. So they're catching on. But I would go in and I would get a piece of cheesecake and a cup of coffee at like 11 or oh, 12. Oh, it was tasty though. And Brad and I would like enjoy it. And then what happens immediately in your brain? Oh, you feel guilty. I am so like, ashamed. Immediately. And you're like, why do we do this? Now I'm going to go to bed on 400 calories that are just going to sit there. But Why am I God, doing this? It's going to sustain us through the night. And so that has never been my thought. We won't that be hungry. Never. All those calories at work. That was never a thought in my brain. Uh, it's good but and in my mind, I would think, okay, this has got to stop. I have to stop doing this, right? And then what would happen? The next night rolls around. And the cheesecake is still there. And my gosh, you don't want to throw it out. That'd be really oh, wasteful. Somebody wasteful. worked really hard on it. Yeah. So you go in and you do it again. Now, I'm using a silly one. We can go with anything. Okay? This can be anything in your life. But it's so true. But it is true for me. That's why we don't have...
sweets in our house. And so what I want to help you to understand today is that when you break a cycle, you, a lot of times, you might do good for a few days, okay? So you want to stop smoking, right? I'm pointing at Brad. He's never smoked a day in his life. But you want to stop smoking. And so you just give it up. And you go one or two, three days, and you're like, yes. And you start telling people, you're like, I'm beating this thing. I'm going to do it. And then four or five days rolls around, and you're just like, you know what? I know what I could do. I could just have like one. Just like one a day would not be too bad for me. And so you have one, right? Or maybe it's drinking, or maybe it's anything, okay? But what we do is we go back, and we tell ourselves we can have just a little. You know what? I'll just have just a little bit. And finally, we find ourselves in a, in a back in a routine, back in a cycle that we thought we had broken. I want to show you this morning that if you're truly going to break a cycle, you literally have to break it. Now, when you break a cycle, there should be a lot of pieces that are now everywhere. And I want you to imagine, how do you go back? to that cycle again, I mean, if my cycle was drinking coffee at midnight with my cheesecake and I destroyed my mug, or Shelby's, how could I go back to it? I can't because I made a decision to destroy it, to take every hint of temptation out of my life. You see, last week we talked about Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, and we said he got radical. He went and he smashed or he destroyed all of the idols in the land. See, if you want to give up something, you want to get rid of a bad habit, you need to destroy it. But I also want to tell you that statistics say if you break a bad habit or you break a cycle, you are statistics will say that you can't just break it without replacing it, Okay. If you want to successfully get rid of a cycle, something in your life, then you need to replace it. I heard of a guy this week who was talking about the fact that every day about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he would get really sleepy at work. And because he would get really sleepy at work, he would get up, he would go into the cafeteria at his work, he would get a chocolate chip cookie, he would get his chocolate chip cookie, get himself a cup of coffee. doesn't sound half bad. I know. Get a cup of coffee, stand around with the coworkers, eat the chocolate chip cookie, take about a 10 minute break, go back to his desk and get to work. Then fall asleep. <laughs> and have that sugar crush. Well, he said, I was doing this for a while and I really intentionally did not mean to start a cycle. I didn't mean to start a habit. But all of a sudden I started noticing that my pants weren't fitting very well. And one day my wife made a comment that like I you, was- Like you just did earlier. This could be you, baby, because your pants, we had this Wait issue the other day, but... Uh, I'm fine. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please okay. continue. So it actually is not Brad. <laughs> I really didn't. I am not that fat. <laughs> really? Not him. <laughs> but this guy said, okay, so I stepped on the scales, and my wife was right. I had gained eight pounds within a few weeks of every day having this chocolate chip cookie. And so he said, I told myself, like... Why am I doing that? Am I actually hungry? Did I really want it? What in the world? Why have I done this? And so he started doing this study to figure out at that time, maybe I could do something different. What if I, instead of a chocolate chip cookie, I get up and go for a walk? What if I just went and took a break and talked to my coworkers but didn't eat the chocolate chip cookie? So he did this test to figure out what is it really that I want? Do I really want the sugar? What is it I want? And he figured out that, you know what? Just going out, taking a break, talking to his coworkers, and coming back in, he got more satisfaction out of that, and he dropped his eight pounds because he replaced what he had been doing with something else. And a lot of times in our life, what we do is we try to break a cycle. We try to break a habit. We go cold turkey. In a few days, we realize that we can't handle it, and we go right back to the same thing. And after you do that a couple times, you begin to have that fear and insecurity that Brad was talking about, that it'll never change. It'll always be this way. I've never been able to quit. I've never been able to get over that. I've never been able to move past that. And yet the Bible tells us that I can do all things through Jesus who gives me strength. Did you know that God cares about every part of your life? You see, Paul was talking about sin cycles. He was talking about the things that literally separate us from God. But we're talking about not only sin cycles, but things that are just damaging in your relationships. Things that maybe you do that just drive your family 
crazy. Things that you yourself would feel better if you would stop doing or start doing. And we have to be so vague, and here's why. Because these things affect everything. Maybe you don't ever brush your teeth, right? And that's a cycle you need to start. Maybe you, we were talking about that, weren't we? (laughs) We were. I mean, cycles can affect any area. And I want you to understand this morning from 2 Peter 2 and 19, it says this. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. When you get into habits, you literally become a slave to that thing that starts controlling your mind. And it's just like the guy with the cookie. Every day when he stopped trying to do that, his brain would tell him, it's 3 o'clock, I need a cookie. It's 11 o'clock, the kids are in bed, I need cheesecake. Wait, wait, Brad said that thing that he always says that ticks me off, and now I'm going to let my head spin around, and I'm going to bite his head off. Because that's what we do. We get into these cycles, and we allow it to control us. I want for just a minute for you guys to understand that we have taught on balance at this church many, many times, balanced living, that God wants us to honor him with every part of our life. Yet a lot of times what we do is we write off some of our habits as, I don't have time to do the good habits. I don't really have time to read my word. I don't really have time to go to church all the time. I don't really have time to work out. I don't really have time to eat right because it's faster to go through a drive through I don't really have time to spend time with my spouse and date them. You know, we talked to somebody the other day. When was the last time you went out on a date? Uh, how long have we been married, they said? Um, 20 years. I'm like, You haven't gone on a date in 20 years? There's a reason you're here today talking to us, okay? Because you got to establish habits in your life. You got to establish those good habits. You got to break those old habits. You know, in the beginning of our marriage, Brad and I got into a cycle and into a habit of how we handled conflict as a married couple. And every time there was a little bit of conflict, you know how we would handle it? Defensive mode would kick in, and it would always be, That is not my fault. And all of a sudden, voices would raise, emotions would skyrocket. If we weren't demonically possessed, you would have thought it if you would have been our neighbors. I mean, you begin in this cycle, and three years went by, and it was like, I love you, but I hate you. I can't stand what we're in until one day we decided to break that old cycle and replace it with something different. We figured out a different way to handle conflict. We decided if we were going to have an issue, how about we not bring it up while the other one is already mad? Good idea? Yes. One of the things that saved our marriage. How about we break the cycle of sleeping in and get up and read our Bible and pray together every single day? Hello. We started replacing that cycle. How about we pray together every night before we go to sleep, even if we've just been frustrated with one another? Yes, we broke a cycle. We started a new one. Do you see where we're going? God wants us to take an inventory of our life. Over the last two weeks, we've asked the question, who wants to break cycles? And almost all the hands go up. We all have cycles, and every one of them are individualized to us. My cycle is not yours. What yours is is not mine. Only you know the cycles and the habits that are destructive to your health, to relationships, to your family, to your job. And yet only you are the one who can make a decision to say, I'm going to break. I'm going to utterly destroy those old habits, just like Hezekiah. And I'm going to replace it with a different one. Maybe you've come to Christ and you're like, you know what? I heard Pastor Brad say I needed to get new influences in my life. I need to totally and completely do away with those old influences. I need to completely and totally destroy that and what? Find some new friends. Come to church. Come to Wednesday night. You have to replace them. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3 and 23, and whatever you do, do it with all your heart as to the Lord and not to men. God wants us to take seriously every facet of our life. Every single facet. You know, when you're laying on your deathbed at the end of your life, what regrets will you have? It's a really good way to start at the end and go backwards to where you are today to figure out what cycles in your life need to be broken or changed. If you were laying on your deathbed, what would you really care about? Would you care about all the overtime you put in to pay for the payment of the big truck you had? Or would you care that you would have spent more time with your family? 
Would you have cared at the end of your life that what was causing it was something that possibly you could have prevented? Maybe you did something to land yourself there. You see, what we do is we typically run, 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 run. We go, 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 go throughout our life without stopping and thinking about what we're really doing and what we're really passing down to our children. Have you ever seen your kids do something that you do? Have you ever heard a word come out of their mouth and you say, whoa, don't say that young lady. And they said, but you just did. I'm like, oh, man, don't do what I do. Do what I say, right? I'm the parent. Our cycles just passed down and we've got to stop and really take inventory. This morning, we're going to give you three practical ways, very practical ways that you scientifically as well as biblically break bad cycles. The first one is this. You have to choose one habit. One. What we tend to do is when we preach a message like this, we take inventory of our entire life. We realize we're really completely messed up. And we need to start a whole bunch of good habits, break a whole bunch of bad ones. And man, we go out of here and we're like, I'm going to nail it in the morning. Whole new routine. Getting up at four, working out for a for an hour doing insanity, going to eat a salad for lunch, going to do this and this and this, going to read my Bible. I'm going to spend an hour with my kids tonight. And you do that for about two days, and the next day you oversleep because you exhausted yourself, and you're like, I can't do it, right? And you go back to the same old. Choose one. It's scientifically proven. Choose one. Start with one. The second thing you have to do is make a plan. And you've heard it said a million times. If you fail to plan, you will plan to fail. The Bible makes it clear that when you have a plan, write it down. It's not a goal. It's not a vision. It's not a plan unless it's written down. Write it down. And the final thing is be disciplined. Did you know that the root word of a disciple all comes from the same thing, discipline and disciple. God has called us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We are to be disciplined people. We are not to be mastered or be slaves to anything or to anyone. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. God wants us to take inventory of our life, and he wants us to choose one thing. This has been on our heart for months to preach this series, and I don't know that we've conveyed it the way that God laid it on us, but I hope you understand that there are destructive cycles in all of our lives that need to be broken. There are new cycles in all of our lives that need to be developed so that we pass on to the next generation something that we will be proud of on our deathbed, something that will change future generations. And it's only going to happen if we choose, if we make a plan, and if we stay disciplined. Amen. So this morning, I want to just encourage you, you know, as we bring this to a close today, um, you know, just I know that the Holy Spirit has a way of, of, of speaking to us and ministering to us and showing us things, revealing us thing, to us things about ourselves. And, and so what is that one thing for you this morning, that, that one thing that you want to begin to change? You know, like Misty was talking about, we need to honor God with every part of our life. And there might be something that God is dealing with you about. It might be something as, you know, uh, seemingly insignificant as just, just eating better so that you can feel better, so that you can honor God with your body. Or it might be something as severe as maybe alcoholism or pornography or some sort of horrible addiction that's incredibly destructive and destroying your life. Whatever it is, I want to tell you that I want to encourage you today to let you know that, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You can do this. Stop labeling yourself as a failure. Start believing that you are the person that God has called you to be. Remember, you're crucified with Christ, and it's not you who lives. It's Christ who lives inside of you. And so you're not the one that's really overcoming. It's Christ overcoming inside of you, but you have to let him do it. You have to let him begin to make that work happen in your life. You have to hand yourself over to him because he is the master of our life, and he doesn't want us to have any other thing ruling over us. So if you would stand this morning, now, what is that one thing? What is that one thing? Once you've acknowledged that, hey, make a plan. Ask God to show you a plan 
to overcoming this cycle in your life. You know, I, I want to really encourage you. One of the best cycles you can begin is, is just as soon as you get up, as soon as you're done doing your thing in the morning, man, make sure before you leave for the day that you read the Word of God, that you get in God's presence. We, we, call, it, we call it the 15-minute challenge. Spend five minutes, okay, in God's Word. Spend five minutes in worship. Spend five minutes in prayer. And it's only 15 minutes, but it will set you straight for the day that is ahead. It will set you up for a day with God and His presence and His power at your fingertips if you will seek Him first. What an amazing cycle to begin if you haven't began that cycle in your life. So right now, if you would, just, just close your eyes, and I just want to pray with you. And if, if, you're, if you're believing God this morning to just begin breaking these cycles, and you, you want Him to show you this plan, and you want Him to give you the gift of discipline, which He can do, I just want you to commit that to Him right now. You can lift up your hands if you want, just as a sign of surrender to the Lord, and your commitment to Christ Jesus as master of your life, and just begin to say, God, show me right now. God, show me a plan right now. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray that you would give complete clarity to each individual, Lord, that is being ministered to right now. God, show them the most important cycle right now in their life that needs to be broken. Just one cycle that you can work with them on, Father God, and show them a plan by which to break they can go about breaking this cycle in their life, Father God. Give them wisdom. Give them strategy. Give them discernment on how to begin to break this cycle in their life. And Father, I pray most importantly, God, that as, as disciples of Jesus Christ, you would give them discipline to see these cycles broken. God, help them to be consistent. Help them to be steadfast. Help them to be unconditionally committed Father God, to seeing change happen in their lives for the glory of God. Whatever that may be, begin right now, God, just ministering to them and giving them a spirit of discipline right now, Father God. Lord, we thank you in advance, Lord, for breaking cycles in people's lives. We thank you in advance for the great stories, the great testimonies that are to come because you have given discipline to your people, Father God. Holy Spirit, I pray that each and every day that you would just come alongside each individual that's making this covenant with you right now and you would just encourage them and you would challenge them and you would convict them, Father God, and give them strength, Father, in the powerful name of Jesus. And as heads are bowed and eyes are closed today, I, I, I just want to know if there's anybody in this room or maybe you're watching online and you would say, Pastor Brad, I need a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus. I want to give you that opportunity right now. I just want you to pray with me. Say, Father, I love you and I thank you for Jesus. I admit that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. And I pray that you would forgive me of my sin. I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are Lord. And I confess with my mouth, there is none above you. I dedicate from this moment forward, God, that I'm going to live for you according to your word. God, I give you praise. I give you honor. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen and amen. If you guys are believing that God has broken the cycle in your life today, and you can see that process beginning by the power of Almighty God, would you give God praise today? Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.